Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. It's been a while. <laughs> um, over the holidays, I ended up taking a larger hiatus than I ever really intended to. Um, I just, yeah, I guess just kind of, you know, how it is. Just kind of vacationing and stuff, time ends up passing by. And then we ended up going to California as a family. And um, it, I didn't really take any of my gear, so I didn't really have the opportunity to keep recording. So I, I'm i kind of behind um, where I wanted to be at this point. Like, by now, I kind of envisioned myself already being, like, uh, not well within, but at least maybe one or two episodes uh, within episode two. But, you know, this is episode eight. And after this, we do have the season finale nine episode. But I'll be getting into that more towards the end. But, you know, I guess for the next two weeks, I'll be playing catch up, trying to finish. I'm going to try to finish these two um as quickly as possible like today is january 12th it's saturday so the, this should be done and released by monday episode 9 should probably be done and released by maybe the next monday or you know within that week but i'm gonna try to have it down pretty soon because i do want to keep going i have a couple other ideas like that i want to talk about in the next ones so then you know i'll keep uh i'll keep pressuring myself to keep producing these like as quickly as possible but within like giving myself enough time to do them like with as much quality as i can but but yeah so uh this one like i had mentioned um at the end of episode seven for you guys to remember i kind of wanted to take back and do sort of like a retrospective episode and kind of talk about um where i am now and kind of what led to the foundations of like the podcast and then kind of go back and then do like little uh, pieces of info on all the other episodes that I've done, so one through seven, um, and then just kind of give you guys a little bit uh, of snippets of information that I picked up since uh, since the days that I actually recorded them. So kind of yeah, just stepping back and uh, you know talking about where this whole thing began. Uh, I mentioned it a little bit in the very first intro episode, but originally I actually wanted the podcast to be more of like video form and in kind of take place as more like countdown videos, um, like the ones you see on YouTube, because I remember ever since I was like kind of young and I started getting into those, especially like the paranormal type stuff, like I really liked them. And I started like to think like, oh, maybe I can actually make these myself. And um, I I, I was kind of set on doing that, but a couple years passed by and I just never really, I never really did it. Uh, I didn't really get a camera actually until I was like, must have been like 18 or 19 but yeah like I I could have probably started it with you know with more basic equipment it would have not been like the best quality stuff but I could have been making them at least but uh right around that time when I was like maybe 18 19 is like when the whole like uh, YouTube uh, apocalypse adpocalypse like they call it started going down so then I kind of was dissuaded from doing um that type of form of content so then I was kind of waiting until I would find something else that I could use to actually get into like the whole creative process. And then, you know, I got into school and then, you know, like another year or two passed by. And then, you know, now we're in, it would have been what, like, it was just last year, 2018, um, when I was, you know, 20 going into 21, uh, is like when podcasts really started to, because podcasts have actually been, from what I understand, have been popular for a while but it seems like in the last one or maybe i guess like one to three years it's been gaining like a lot of traction and a lot of a lot of uh a lot of people have been watching them so then i was thinking hey maybe that's the that's the right thing to get into so i mean the investment the initial investment which you know it's still kind of what i'm working on working with now i mean i bought a little bit of like other pieces that i use now too like in my setup but the initial investment of just buying like the the h1 and and just like little pop filters and stuff like that and then getting into like the adobe suite and stuff which i already had i already knew how to use adobe premiere because like my film classes that's pretty much like not only the standard they use but the industry standard too like in the professional world so i just had to learn how to use audition which was relatively easy it's almost the same idea so it wasn't really that much of a stretch to just jump into like a different uh, subset of what I already knew. So then since then I just kind of started it. And then what I find kind of cool about this format is that it's just talking. Um, it's, it's stuff that I really would talk about I mean, to people 
like already anyway so i i don't find it too difficult to really do it um yeah it's, i mean I, I i get a little nervous each time i'm about to start like i'm always afraid that i'm gonna sound like i'm just making stuff up or like i don't know what i'm talking about but um it it gets easier each time i think and uh i think i i can notice that because like the episodes without really me trying to necessarily make them longer they end up being a little longer so then i re i realized that i started to get a little bit better at kind of expanding on the subjects and um sort of like explaining them a little better i think and you know since then i guess like what i've learned is that um content producing you know it's it's uh it's fun and i think on the surface it seems like it's fun but i think you'll never really understand how fun it is until you actually do it which uh this has been a really rewarding experience just doing it doing it and um even you know just kind of like planning for it and researching it and then getting down to uh actually recording it and then like the workflow of the you know the whole process of it i guess the other thing that has taught me is just time management which i guess that's like one of those things um that it's it's uh, it's very cliche to say i guess but it's really important in like the course of life in general without time management it's like you have so many ideas to that you want to actually like execute but you find that you don't have time for them and that's like usually that's the big reason why and uh i i do get reminded of that a lot of times because i've been in that situation like where i wanted to do things and create things but you know i just find that i don't have the time for it and i look back and and I'm thinking like, what, <laughs> what, you know, where, where did the time go? And then I realized, oh, well, you know, it was just for some dumb, for some dumb reason that, that I didn't end up doing it. So time management, I guess, for anyone that's looking to, you know, do this or just any sort of like video and stuff like that, uh, or any other type of content creation, music and whatever, like, uh, you know, the, they do say 80% of it is showing up, which, you know, I do agree. You got to start in order to create, but once you're there, you got to, you know, I guess, prioritize and time, you know, manage your time. That way you do have time to actually create what you've set out to do, right? So yeah, getting into like the actual info, though, part, um, you know, the the first episode that I actually did that was like informational was the second one, which was the Port Townsend one, where I told like my experience of what I thought might have been like a ghost story about stuff that are like particular to that i don't have other info i haven't caught or read um anything like as far as videos that i've seen that have gone specifically into that the last time that i heard something new about it was when i actually talked about it in the second episode like where uh top five unknowns or top five unknowns had um did a video where they showed that picture of like what kind of looked like a demon i guess like inside one of the bunkers and so happens that, you know, we were there. I can't say if that was that bunker, but, um, you know, it was on the same premises. So that kind of like gave more fuel to the conversation. But like I said, as far as that, um, I had nothing new, but uh, kind of something that's relevant to me that we just did over vacation is it, it is uh, not a ghost story per se, but it's like surrounded um, by the idea that there might be ghosts. Uh, and it's actually kind of a somewhat of a serious subject, kind of a sad story, but uh, it kind of it consists of the Bally's Hotel and Casino uh, in Las Vegas. For those of you guys who know what um, where that is, so essentially, you know, what went down over vacation is that we stayed there for two nights. Uh, and I guess right off the bat, I'll say the disclaimer that I didn't really experience anything. I didn't see anything. Um, I mean. We were out most of the time, so we weren't really, like, in the hotel, like, really observing things. But, I mean, I, I personally didn't catch anything. So, essentially, the whole conceit of the story was that in on November 21st of the year 1980, there was a fire at the Old Valleys. And um, this is the second largest uh, loss of life related to a hotel fire that has ever happened in the United States. Uh, essentially, what happened was that 87 people, uh, and 700, 87 people died and 700 people were injured. Uh, all across the 26-story building. Um, and essentially that what happened was that uh, the way that the hotel was designed back then as far as security measures, um, it was... What, what essentially happened was, like, if you guys have heard of, like, the deadlock uh, system that they have in uh, hotels, like, they're kind of, like, 
foolproof in terms of you being able to like get in because it's like the 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 main disc itself can't really get in unless they're um like the person on the inside is like uh able to actually open it and uh i guess the only option from what i've heard it sounds like a bit extreme at first i didn't really get it but i guess from what i understand it's like the only option is like let's say the person inside is asleep and someone's trying to get in and uh they're trying to get in with their card but uh at that point the, the deadlock kind of supersedes that so it's like the only option is to chop down the door like literally so what happened was is that at some point a fire actually started like on the highest floor i think of the building and because of that like people that were and it was during the night i think so people were asleep uh and i and sort of like the i guess the hallway doors like to like the steps and the stairs they worked the same way so like already a large number of people kind of i guess died in their sleep because like when they realized that the fire was already on them and and that was it and then some people got out but then when they got into like the emergency staircases uh they the i guess like there was only one door on the top and one door on the bottom so people coming in from the top were thinking they're going to be able to get out from the bottom floor but it turns out that it was locked from the i guess it would have been from the outside so then which was a security feature i guess so people couldn't like random people that weren't patrons could actually get up in it but in that case it ended up working against them because people that were in the in the staircases uh couldn't actually escape so anyone that was trapped in the staircase actually died like they they reported that there was no no survivors for the people that actually uh went down that way so you know fast forward to now they say that specifically on the 18th floor uh, and other floors, but so more so the 18th floor, I guess, is where they've reported more, uh, like apparitions. They report, uh, poltergeists and haunts, and they see apparitions of people. They hear noises. They see phantom smoke, which I thought that was kind of interesting when I read. They kind of like in the middle of the rooms, I guess, they'll start to see smoke coming out of the vents. They'll call the front desk about a fire, but they do like an investigation. They send the fire department up, but there is no fire. So, that's kind of different. I've never heard of that specifically, like phantom smoke, but it, it, uh, I guess it's a thing. So you know, uh, you know, God rest the souls of everyone that perished that day. But that's a uh, another thing that I was around. I guess that has like that ghost story culture that's permeated around it. But like I said, I actually didn't get to see anything like as far as the stuff that went down. I, I, you know, I didn't feel any weird things. Like, I, I, I slept like a baby while we were there, honestly. So, I didn't, uh, I can't say that I can neither confirm or deny, I guess, that, you know, it's true. But maybe someone that does stay there, and this is the Bally's Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, does have an experience. They can leave a comment or, you know, email me about it. And then I can, you know, I can thereby confirm that it is true. But what is definitely true and the saddest part is the tragedy. Um, so yeah, it's kind of sometimes difficult to um, talk about that because it, some people might say that that kind of not a, it. I'm drawing a blank on the word, but it's like it kind of takes it not so seriously, I guess. But you know that is a very serious thing. But you know, moving on to episode three which was the Ghost of Mexico episode. Uh, now this, I do actually have some more interesting stuff to talk about as far as new things that I learned. Uh, while we were you know, on vacation in during the holiday season, uh, we were staying at my grandparents' house. And during that time, at some point, uh, there was a story that was told uh, specifically from my grandma that um, kind of deals with another character like that's prominent in Mexican folklore. Now, I can't remember if I mentioned it specifically in the third episode, and I might have, but I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure I didn't actually give a full segment about it, but if I didn't talk about it, well, then this is the first time, I guess, that some people might be uh, hearing it, but there's these characters, uh, or I shouldn't say characters, but I guess figures within like the, the Mexican lexicon of uh, horror and like folklore. They are called Los Duendes, and I guess... 
the closest English translation to what a duende would be would be either like a leprechaun or like a gnome. So it's kind of a smaller uh, sort of humanoid creature. Like it, it has like the appearance of adult, but I'm an adult, but it's probably like no more than a foot and a half tall, maybe at the most. But so uh, my grandma was kind of re recanting this story that she had at some point during her teenage years, I guess. Uh, she was, I guess, having trouble sleeping that night and she was kind of tossing and turning. And then at some point she kind of sits up and then she looks out onto the floor and then she said she saw like three or four different duendes. Uh, they were just staring back at her. And then she remembers that she got really scared. But in that, um, she, the next thing that she remembers, which is kind of odd, it's, it's sort of a, a quick jump to what happened next but all this she remembers was that she woke up because i guess in this old house that she used to live in there was sort of like a kind of like a park bench sort of like on the the front road of where she lived and uh, she woke up i guess sleeping there and it must have been like she said three or four in the morning and then <laughs> and then her mother uh comes out and uh in in not so nice words basically like tells her to get back inside <laughs> um but she to this day she can't remember how she got from i guess her bed to that park bench but she does specifically remember in in her words that she saw those duendes she got scared and then she woke up outside she can't remember why but that's essentially what happened and another story actually that was told during one of those nights sitting around the dinner table was and this i'm i want to say that i did mention it i i i might have told that story too but essentially what it what this one relates to is the whole idea of the cursed money where um people that were working you know from sun up to sundown in suasera de la borda in other towns like that you know back in revolutionary uh era mexico who had this money stolen and i guess uh sort of and they were people that were amenazados which it's uh basically harassed by bandits and and you know corrupt government officials and such would bury this money and they put sort of like an incantation or you know slash curse which uh would basically mean that the people that find it would go through some sort of tragedy or something negative would happen to them now the the way that it was told here though it kind of added another dimension to it uh it was kind of more like straightforward as to what happened i had not heard it like this but i had heard parts of the story before and i remember that i had heard it partly as a kid but i had not hold or had not heard the full version of the story until now which i thought was kind of interesting how both my grandparents were living in mexico back and this is probably in the 19 1970s early 1980s and they had gotten word by like a friend that was a previous owner of the house that there was like a i guess like a, a sum of money or gold and silver that was buried under the house so they started digging and they, i guess they had a metal detector too and, and every time they would pass over it it would start beeping as if you know yeah there was something there um and so they were digging and digging and it took a while until at some point Apparently, they blew, like, one of the water mains, and then it started to fill. So then after that, you know, they stopped, and they, you know, and they patched it and everything, and then it, um, and that was that. But later on, they heard, like, I guess what, the first version that they had heard was not, like, the full extent of what actually was, what well, was supposed to be told to them, I guess. But essentially, like, the curse or incantation that was placed on that, because it was, it was, like, money that belonged to gypsies, apparently, and I guess whatever incantation that was told that if you find that, you know, that sack of, of treasure or money, um, yeah, you can take it. But essentially you have to, someone has to die in order for that person that found it in order to like, to enjoy the spoils. But it's like, it's not known who, that could be family, it could be someone, but it's like someone will die in order to, uh, in order to actually enjoy that money, which after coming back from vacation and kind of doing the research leading up to this episode, I realized that actually that's pretty similar to the 2000 movie, the box or 2009 movie, the box. And this is one starring James Marsden and Cameron Diaz and Frank Langella. And, uh, some of you guys might've seen this one. It was kind of neat. I remember when I saw it, but it's like, 
from from the plot was that like Frank Langella's character, which was part of like this bureau that was kind of like a shadowy government type thing, like they would show up at your door and they had like a a box. It was a wooden box, and inside there was a red button. And then he would explain to in this specific place in case it's like he's explaining it to James Marsden and Cameron Diaz that there's a red button inside the box, and if they press it, like they'll get a million dollars just for pressing it. But the only caveat is that someone that they don't know is going to die and you know that's like the only um caveat like other they'll get paid you know like they'll find that that million dollars is like deposited into their account like in a legit way the next day as soon as it's done but like what was interesting though was that they ended up i guess spoiler alert (laughs) they ended up taking it but what happened i don't remember who died specifically but what ended up happening was that that random person that died somewhere in the world it started a chain reaction that like it, though initially it didn't actually affect them like it went you know it, it, it started a domino effect that did affect them in a really major way like towards the end of the movie so it's like that type of thing that i i rem- it reminded me of that sort of it's like what if you know what if someone would have died assuming that all this you know this stuff is real what if someone would have died and eventually started a chain reaction that kind of led back to my grandparents right so it's like it's a good thing that at the time that the water main blew that they stopped their search for that and they actually heeded the warning of the person that said that someone would have had to die in order for them to actually like enjoy uh the spoils and uh you know next which was episode four about the alternate reality games i haven't really seen any alternate reality games like that are new um the sun vanished which was the one that i kind of ended on for episode four i haven't actually checked the status and now that i think about it it probably should because i did say i wanted to talk about that more as it developed and i think it's still going um i just haven't really gone on to like the twitter forums or like the the youtube page and kept watching what's going on but one of these days i'm gonna have to go back and then later on you know, maybe in season two, we'll have an update, uh, which I, I mean, I want to talk about future plans more towards the end of uh, the episode. I have a new P- I have a piece plan for that. Well, I'll be going that into actually some exciting news about the coming Patreon for the podcast. But uh, essentially, I guess to just summarize it real quick, uh, I want to do sort of like sub series inside of the podcast itself. So I mean, like I, I do already have like the, what do you know? I called the, um, the sort of like obscure non obscure movies like which is just all like the movie reviews that i've done like so far has been drive and seven uh and you know i'm gonna continue that but i do want to do something uh, called the horror update which is going to be specifically um just focused around like my horror episodes and my paranormal episodes so i mean i guess you could consider the arg and um like the ghost of mexico and the poor townsend ones as like the first episodes of that even though i didn't call it like that at the moment i didn't really know that i wanted to do that but you know i'll be updating on those as well as adding in new stories that i pick up i'm always trying to watch and sort of read about stuff because i just for some reason that just interests me (laughs) i don't know why it's just one of those things um but yeah like and then um i'm working on a specific format for that which might be a little different it'll still be i'll still be the podcast but i mean i'm working on doing some some dedicated music to that and sort of like taking that in its own direction which it'll so like it's a it'll be like a a sub standalone type thing but it'll still be like in the general realm of what i already do but you know getting back to arg um like i said i haven't really like looked on the status of the sun vanished and there's a lot more that are older that i still haven't seen but you know that coming for those horror updates i'll definitely be on there but i guess like the one thing that i would add to it which i did see recently which i'd recommend everyone to go watch if you have access to netflix and and, and it's like not necessarily an arg in the traditional sense but it, it's an arg for the people that are involved in the movie if that makes sense just like the characters they go through an experience that's kind of like that uh which is i'm talking about black mirror bandersnatch um yeah, and essentially what, what the conceit of Bandersnatch is is like it's a choose your own adventure movie. So throughout the movie you you have choices that will lead the character down different paths. And overall I think there's like five main endings and up to fifteen sub endings you can get to. So it's like you'll get a choice 
and every tenth or everyone has about ten seconds for you to decide. Now you can actually choose to like not uh do any choices and you'll still actually watch the movie. Um and I think there there's like a predetermined ending which is like how it was written in the script originally and then afterwards they went back and then they wrote like the sub endings and the other endings and whatnot. But uh that ending is one of the five main ones and I think what I read was that and I, and I went back and checked the time and it's true cause I, I've seen it once like playing or actually I guess I've seen it twice I guess like playing the different endings and then once like just uh kind of not really interacting with it and yeah the first time it takes about or I mean or the time with not uh doing any choices takes about an hour and a half but if you're playing the game and actually really like choosing choices you can be there for up to like five hours so that's i guess that's another disclaimer like if you watch it and then you're wondering like why it's not ending is it's just kind of like it has so many loops at some point you'll get to an ending that you can't really play but a lot of times you actually get to a point like where your character i guess like dies or something happens that and they'll shoot you back it's kind of like the checkpoint system in a lot of video games uh so that's pretty neat but what's interesting, though, and I guess not to spoil too much, but the reason why I say that it's kind of like an ARG for the characters that are in the the movie itself, specifically the main character, is that at some point he starts complaining that he feels like um, he's not in control of his own life. And, and which <laughs> is pretty crazy. I guess this is kind of a little bit of a spoiler, but at, at one point, like, you have the... the the choice to actually uh let the main character know that the person that's controlling his life is netflix which is kind of really meta because this is a movie on netflix or black mirror is a netflix series but uh it like it tells him that netflix is the one that's controlling his choices which is technically us which we are so then it becomes really meta actually like where it's letting him know that we're actually controlling it even though we're not trying to send him down a negative path necessarily because you know like i guess a same person wouldn't want someone else to get hurt but sometimes like inevitably it's like you end up you end up sending him down a main path or like a negative path which i think like four out of five of the of the paths are kind of negative only one is somewhat positive Um, but it's like, yeah, it's kind of like sort of a tragic story in that way, but it's an ARG that's within a movie that the ARG affects the people in the world. So it's like, it's multidimensional, I guess. Um, it like, uh, it's interesting how that, how that works, but yeah, like for anyone that's interested in that, I'd recommend you go watch it and try a couple of different endings and then, you know, leave a comment or send me a message about it and uh, we can compare the endings that, that, uh, we have because I, the ones I've seen, there's one uh, there's one that I don't want to spoil actually because that one's actually like worth you doing it but in one essentially what happens is like he goes back in time because one of the conceits is like that his mom dies because of a choice that he made as a kid just sort of like in it he he sort of causes that death unwittingly but in one he's able to go and correct it to where like he's able to share like those last couple moments like with his mom but they both end up dying but then it's like it's kind of nice because it's like they both died together but they were on good terms as opposed to like where they left like in the middle of an argument and then the mom passes away so it's like kind of it's kind of a a good ending in that case if you consider it but you know now actually moving on to episode five uh drive um you know, nothing particularly new for that one. I did say I would want to talk about it again, but I haven't really actually sat down and found another subject that uh, I can talk about. And maybe that means it's time to watch it again. So <laughs> um, at some point, maybe episode, I mean, uh, season two, maybe season three, I'll come back in some capacity. Um, so, yeah, episode six, which was about Hicks and Gracie and Choke. Nothing particularly new about that because, I mean, that that movie itself is old. Um, you know, now it's probably like 30, almost 30 years ago that it actually came out. Something, I guess, specifically about Hicks and Gracie that's new, um, which is kind of for the people there in the jiu-jitsu community, it's something that's kind of important. Uh, he got promoted to his red belt. So I think that went down the summer of 20... I think it might have been the summer of 27 or 2018 or 2017 2018 is it's 
pretty recent though. I just I saw the video around that time. But yeah, like I guess uh, whilst giving a like a seminar in Las Vegas, I think it was uh, his brothers and a couple other like the high ranking masters kind of just burst in and they kind of called a stop to it and they surprised him. And then like, you know, next thing you know, they pull out a red belt and he's promoted, which in jujitsu, the the red belt, which at that point, it's like the the ninth degree because like Elio Gracie, which was the dad of all the Gracies, which is like the one of the two, three main founders of jujitsu back in like the 1920s. Uh, they all had 10th degree red belts, but that's like reserved for like founder level. So I think ninth degree red belt is the highest that anyone living today will ever actually achieve if they like, um, if they pursue jujitsu, I guess, and keep going with it. So he was just promoted with it. And with him being like, a lot of people consider him to be like the, the champion of jujitsu, like indefinite as in terms of like he's the, the, the he's the goat basically <laughs> like the greatest of all time and uh i yeah i mean i i i agree like there's i mean like i talked about it in his um in his episode about choke but you know apparently he had like a record of 400 and some fights going into the um 95 valley tudo who knows if that's true and you know who knows if like all those fights were necessarily like legit in this or legitimate in like the case that I was saying like I kind of talked about it that in that episode too about how a lot of those fights were probably not like against top competition like the people he faced in Valley Tudo or the people that he faced like in his short stint in Pride they were probably just punks off the street they got like you know uh, <laughs> the way I, I heard this in the video the other day and it made me um it made me laugh. It was like, oh, cause it was talking about like in that scene in Infinity War, like where the Hulk comes out and starts trying to beat up Thanos. But then when Thanos like uh, kind of reverses on him, then he just kind of like rips him a new one. <laughs> like the way he put it, I think was like uh, he got boxed up like if it was Mike Tyson versus someone that was working at 7-Eleven. So <laughs> basically, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was some of those 7-Eleven guys that came and tried to jump Hickson and then he just like. He took him to the cleaners, basically. <laughs> but assuming that the record is as it is, I'm pretty sure at least a solid number of that was that. But no doubt he faced some of like the the top like fighters that even today I think would give some of the people that you know we see in UFC and like Pride and Dream and K1 or not Pride actually Pride doesn't exist anymore unfortunately. But Dream, which is Dream fighting, is I think it's the spiritual successor to Pride. But yeah, like K one and other fight fighting um uh promotions like even today, you know, I think they might have had their or like a they might have needed to what am I trying to say? Like they 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 would have had their they would have been given a run for their money. There we go. Like I couldn't I couldn't figure out how I wanted to say that. <laughs> um but yeah, so that that's new, you know, like congrats to him. Uh what I heard too was that because of that, you know, now he has the opportunity to like restructure like the, the jujitsu like federations, I guess, as they stand, because I guess one of the big concerns was that a lot of people were like, were getting, because it's like one of the big things that I have heard about, like in jujitsu is like an issue that a lot of people are trained like for, for competition, but they're not trained like on the street. So even like a black belt, who is a pro at competition, maybe in the street, won't be able to handle himself as well as you would think that someone... Because black belt usually means... It's not like master level. Well, yeah, it's master level, but it's not like grand master level. But it's... Someone who has a black belt, you can think they can handle themselves, right? You know, they might necessarily win every fight, but they know how to handle themselves. But the concern was that... the certain Because in certain moves that you do in competition jiu-jitsu, like, you're not going to do in the street, like you know, some of the things that, you know, you practice like on the mat, in my case, even, you know, like doing like cartwheel passes and, and sort of like other types of things. You you can't do that, you know, on the street, you're going to get, you're going to get laid out. So, <laughs> I mean, don't be doing, you know, some backflips and whatnot. Cause usually that, I don't think a real fight really consists of that, but um, it's like the idea was that, yeah, you know, be good at that, but also make sure that you're trained like in the in the, the self-defense stuff that will actually help you and when you need to actually use it. You know, God willing, you don't have to be in that situation. But if you do, you know, and you can't run, you can't escape, you know, and you got to go into like your 
what you know, then, you know, hopefully you're ready. But his concern was it. Like, too many people were not, like, trained in that. We're not trained in that type of stuff. So he was going to make it to, like, where some of the black belts had to get, like, recertified if they could prove what they knew. Also, like, the, the curriculums were going to be restructured to where it was, like, more of an equal number of competition and, and self-defense. So that's actually, that's a good thing, I think. So, yeah, um, that's kind of what's been going on with the jiu-jitsu stuff related i want to have like a full-on jiu-jitsu episode uh talking more about like the history i talked about a little bit about the history in, in the choke episode but i'll have one that's focusing more on that and sort of the foundations and that's probably to come maybe in episode maybe an episode or i keep saying episode but in, maybe in season two i'll make sure to actually do one about that um so yeah so then you know that kind of that kind of covers the the canon that we've uh, we've you know done so far, so that ended, actually that ended up going by a little quicker than what I thought. <laughs> it's because really so far there wasn't like a whole lot of stuff that was new. Uh, I mean, a lot of those things I kind of went into depth um, for what I wanted to explain. It's like impossible, like for the ARG stuff, like it's impossible to talk about the whole canon of ARGs that they've done because it's like I was talking about how. Um, you know, like the first digital ones were done like in nine in the late nineties, early two thousands, and then there's like books that, uh, like the, what was it, the Club of Queer Trades that kind of deals with that, like set in like the real world, but that goes back like way far. So there's there's all kinds of books and stuff that came out that were talking about it w- before. You know, like then they had the digital stuff, and then since then they've made like a whole lot more. So there's a whole lot of stuff. Um, I mean, like the Ghost of Mexico episode. There's I mean, there's there's a set number of characters, but there's so many stories that revolve around in so many versions. For example, like the the story of like the Yorona that I talked about. Like, there's like at least five, six different interpretations of how that story went down. So, I mean, I'd, like I said in the future, like for the horror updates, I want to talk about that stuff. But to talk about it all in one episode, it it'd probably be like you know four hours, five hours, six hours, and I I don't think I can talk that long, honestly. So, um, it's better to split it up. I think. So yeah, like, you know, for now, that's what I got for, like, the updates on those. If I do find something else, you know, I'll try to, on any of those subjects, include that. And actually, right now, I'm I'm, I'm forgetting my episode about seven, but uh, still, you know, nothing new. I guess, like, like the, the one thing that I would say, like, for um, episode, you know, seven about seven and episode five about Drive is if you haven't seen those movies, please do yourself a favor and go watch them. You're missing out. But besides that uh there's nothing too much new about it but they're just as good as when i talked about them then as they are now so go watch those so yeah like i guess like what now what i'm gonna do is kind of my little pitch that i'm gonna do for my patreon that i'm working on it's almost ready in maybe like another two to three weeks i should be submitting it for review because like there's a portion like where they encourage you to do sort of like a video pitch for the people that are gonna be patreons as well as like a written one i've done all that i just gotta record like the the, those like film things but you know i'll give everyone that's listening now kind of like um i guess like a special preview of like what i've gotten so far because i've written out because like the way that patreon works is like there's a tier system so like of donations there's like tier one tier three and you design your own tiers and you call them whatever you want and stuff but that's already done so i'm gonna go ahead and talk about that um you know but before that i kind of want to say the reason why uh like i'm starting one is not so much so i can just pocket money as far as like you know i want to get paid for for what i do because you know this is actually like a sort of like a sub passion for me like i enjoy doing it even for free but, you know, the reality is that, uh, you know, this is not free. I wish it was. I mean, because it's like there's there's costs associated with Podbean as far as like hosting. It, it's well worth what they give you because they give you statistics. They give you the ability to like spread out, you know, to other platforms and whatnot, which is, I think, like a really good path to like, you know, getting your work out there. But like I said, it's not free. So mostly what I'd want like support for, because I think it is important to support artists. Uh, actually, if you watch like the Patreon um, intro video by the guy that created Patreon, he goes into like an explanation about how back in the day, I guess artists like Da Vinci, Michelangelo, they had um, patrons like which were usually people like in sort of like the upper echelons of like society, which like they were basically their sponsors. I guess is the closest thing to what um, it would be. But I mean, Patreon or patron sounds cooler, honestly. Uh, 
but they would support them for their art as you know they were doing these art and they were presenting it to them and then they would give them like you know good sums of money and basically that's what they would live off of so really yeah i'm seeking support for that mostly just to pay the fees that are associated with actually hosting for anyone that you know feels like compelled to donate um for that you know i'd really appreciate it and you know it would help me out to be able to keep producing this guy you know stuff for you and you know because i this is something that i really enjoy i do enjoy interacting with everyone you know and doing the social media and everything so i would uh really be appreciative for people that feel like they want to donate um a secondary thing that i'd want to put this money into is you know investing into like just product for the actual podcast itself like you know, recording, you know, recording technology and other things, because so far, I think I'm pretty well set up. But to keep going and becoming more professional, obviously, there's better and better equipment. So I can money from the donations could help me actually invest in that and invest in actually just producing content that's going to ultimately go back to you guys. Because you know, like I said, this is for you guys. Um, I enjoy doing it. But it is it is for you guys that actually have or they enjoy, I guess, hearing what I have to say about specific subjects. Um, another thing that I re- would, you know, be interested in investing the money is eventually, like I've talked about, I want to do interviews uh, with certain people that I'm aware of, that I'm somewhat familiar with. But a lot of these people are not situated where I am currently, so that would uh, involve uh, flying to their location. So um, some of that money that you know I'm that I'd be receiving as donations would allow me to get to those places and do those interviews. And those would be like really interesting conversations, I think, uh, with these people. So, you know, obviously like as a, quite frankly, as a broke college student, it's kind of hard to be, to say, you know, I'm going to set aside this much money right now to go fly out, you know, for just a day or two even, and then come back. It's, you know, I like guess doable, but it, um, it sets, it could set me back more so. So, I mean, that's mostly the third reason why I want to, like, ask for these donations. And, you know, I'll get into this in the tier system, but I guess, like, for anyone that's worried that the people they are going to get, or the people that become Patreons, like, are going to get preferential equipment, it it's not, um, it's not like that, like, the, the... The episodes that I'm going to do, like, for, like, the main podcast are still going to be as interesting as they are now, I guess. You know, for anyone that does think that they're actually interesting, like, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll maintain the same quality. Obviously, though, because of, like, the Patreon, you know, the way that it works is that they have people that sign up have to get some sort of, like, um, incentive, which it's fair. I think, it you know, if you're paying for it for something, I think you get, you kind of get what you pay for. But my standard my standard of quality is going to remain the same like for like the free users and for the patreons but what i'm proposing so far now which this might change but um so far like i've designed three tiers like i said um so you know i'm keeping it simple like the price ranges and whatnot are uh, staying pretty simple but what i'm doing now is uh, i have one that i titled super three and that's going to be three dollars a month and essentially what i'm doing is like um people that are going to be signed up to uh, super three is every episode um, going down the line after this is officially started and people start signing up um, when we get to nine supporters in each uh or in, in that category every episode um i'll be mentioning i'll be giving shout outs to those nine supporters like at the end a little piece um and i'll be consistent through every episode so it the people that sign up, like I guess, it might not necessarily be every time that they get mentioned, but they're gonna get mentioned more than once, obviously. I'm just gonna be cycling and randomly picking nine. I'll try to get everyone in, and then you know, then I'll cycle back and like re-mention the people that, um, you know, were were not mentioned, I guess, the first time, and then I'll recycle and mention the new people and, and such. Stuff. But so everyone's gonna get mentioned more than once. So so far, you know, that's like the that's like the benefit for that one. In our in my next tier, which I'm calling Super Six, uh, that's going to be six dollars a month. And what's going to happen with that one is that it will be the same idea with the shoutouts, except because uh, um, for sake of time, I'm not going to necessarily shout out everyone's. I'm I'm not sure that I'm really going to get that many patrons, but like assuming that I start getting more and more, for sake of time, I can't necessarily be mentioning like 
you know, like for sake of argument, like hundreds of names. But um, for that tier, I'm going to be shouting out three people. So that so it's going to be nine people in the Super 3 and then three of the Super 6s. But now, so this is going to be uh, one thing that I guess uh, might, might not necessarily fly well with certain people. Now, there's going to be uh, certain, I guess, uh, access to exclusive podcast episodes that I'll be doing for the for the patrons now i would say that they're not going to be any more interesting than what i do now but they're going to deal with topics that i i don't necessarily think uh like they might be a little bit more controversial like than what i talk about here so there'll be certain topics that i guess would be like they might not necessarily be so so like I, I mean, this is not the right word, but I guess they won't be so commercial to be more niche. Um, but like, I'm still going to prioritize the the regular episodes that I do here. And then those are going to be kind of like a sub priority, which I'll be doing less of, but they'll be going to the Patreons as I go, just because of the added benefit that, yeah, they are donating. So, you know, I have to provide something like in order to be an incentive. So yeah, they'll be very, they'll be more niche episodes and more like, I don't want to say risque because I'm not going to talk about anything inappropriate, but um, they they might deal with their, certain things that, like I said, might not be so commercial. So yeah, that's what's going to be for the uh, for the super sixes. Um, so in the last year that I've designed so far, I have and it's called Super Nine, um, which I mean, this, these these titles are kind of redundant as I see, but I didn't want to. I wanted to come up with something that was like sort of cool sounding, but also not too like to where it sounds kind of dumb, I guess. But I mean, who knows? Anyways, uh, so again, you know, another uh, the benefits of this one, uh, like I'll do another three, I'll do another three uh, shout outs for people in this tier. So I guess so far that'll be um, that's going to be 15 people that are going to get, you know, shout outs per episode overall when you combine Super 3, Super 6 and Super 9. You know, and then the Super Nine group is gonna get the the exclusive podcast episodes as well. But also, now this is gonna be fewer and far between because anyone that knows about making videos, it takes longer. But what I want to do is I actually want to make uh, sort of like behind the scenes videos, um, and like sort of like video journals and Q and A's about what it goes into like making these episodes and sort of like my research process and everything. Now, like I said, there are going to be fewer and far between. And I guess for <laughs> for anyone that like is curious to see how I look like, you'll get to actually see how I look like. Cause I'm, I'm not going to put a mask on or anything like that. But <laughs> um, like yeah, for anyone that actually watches like the pitch uh, for Patreon, I guess they're going to see that too. So um, eventually though I do, cause I, I still like I've said it, and I, I haven't really made as much progress on it by now as I would have hoped. But at some point, I want to look into actually doing a website. And uh, eventually, when that's up, some of these I do want to post just like in general for people to see. Okay, I think it'd be interesting. And I, th I think some people would be interested in actually seeing how I make it. And, you know, I like making video too. So that's kind of something that I would enjoy doing. As of now, though, uh, they're going to be first for like the Patreon exclusives for the Super Nines. But like I said, going down the line at some point, they're going to be on that website. So other, so in general, people will be able to see like a no additional charge. So yeah, like I said, you know, overall, the the main content is going to be prioritized. And then, you know, like the Patreon stuff will be a sub priority. But I want to keep the general level of quality the same. It's not like what's already free is going to be any less or better than what I'm going to release for, for the Patreon. So, so far, you know, that's what I have. Like I said, really, it's not for me to pocket any money. Obviously, you know, after reinvesting it into, you know, into what I need, it was whatever's left over. Obviously, like you know, it'll help me put, it'll help me eat and whatnot. But like, um, it's mostly going back to you guys in a way, if you consider that. So yeah, you know, I'd be really be humbled and thankful for anyone that wants to become a patron and and you know, um, and donate or really help me out as an artist to keep you know producing and producing and. Uh, you guys, whoever does, you know, has my thanks forever, basically. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, something that I think I want to do. And for anyone that does feel, like, compelled to donate, you know, 
uh, a humble thank you from you know from me here at the nine. So yeah, you know the I, I actually envisioned this one being a little longer. I don't know how I've been long on going, but I don't think this is as long as like episode seven, uh, for example. But uh, you know, I guess there wasn't so much to this as far like a, as original content. But the next one, which is you know my season finale, which is like overdue like forever because I've been talking about it like for like three months. <laughs> It's going to be the episode about, like, the number nine and, like, the significance of it. Now, this one's going to take a little bit more research, but like I said, I'm going to pressure myself to, like, get it done by by next weekend, if not, like, a couple days within the week. So, let's say, like, the latest I'd have it would be, like, Thursday, Thursday of next week, ideally. I mean, things could happen, but I'm going to gonna try my best to, to find time to get it done somewhere in there so I can keep doing it. And then we'll jump right into season two. And, um... For the premiere, like I have a couple episodes I want to do, but I think what I'm going to do for the premiere is, um, I mentioned this one, I plugged this one at some point, but I want to talk about sort of like the, the culture of like the 1980s and kind of like how it's making a comeback now, like with things like Synthwave. I mean, there's like the movies like Kong Fury and then like Turbo Kid, I think they have kind of dealt like with sort of like that 80s over the top style. So it's something that in my time I've gotten to see like the 80s come back. So yeah, I think that might be our premiere. So look for that maybe like end of january going into february but afterwards after that then you know consider starting i'll go back into like my regular schedule where i'm producing maybe two to three a month ideally i wish i could do more but it's just you know uh if this was like my full-time job yeah i'd be doing this probably like every every day probably but um that's just kind of how life is i guess but yeah you know so going forward look forward to that and thanks again um from you know, from me, my, from me here at the nine, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I still haven't really figured out like how to really introduce and end episodes. I'm I'm kind of bad at that, but yeah, this is this is the ending. Goodbye, guys.